We are first of all stampede. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um for those of you that know I'm laughing anyway, but I'm sure it went well. Um there are there's nothing more certain in life, right? I think I've I've I I read a tweet the other day about it um you know uh London festivals and organizational issues, right? Or sound issues. There's no there's no better duo in the world, right? So over the years, I think I mentioned it on here previously, you know, my relationship with London festivals has been a little bit strained, especially since I've uh, had the blessing or I had the opportunity to go to Primavera, I think three years in a row. This is the first year I'm not going, I'm not going this year because um, some friends dropped out. The lineup wasn't really that great. Um, well, for the friends that I was going with, even though I'm a big fan of festival, I still think, I think sometimes festivals... I wouldn't. I would. I would argue that festivals are not about the lineup. They're more so. No, they're not about the the headliners. They're about the lineup, right? It's about going to a, a space or a park and seeing loads of people for a really great value for money, right? You know, uh, Primavera being a good example. I think the tickets are one fifty to two hundred pounds, right, for the three days, um, which is what sixty quid a day or something like that, right? Um, so for sixty quid a day, you're seeing people that you know at least one band will be thirty quid. I don't think you can even. I don't think you see a band for less than thirty pounds these days, right? I think Slow Tide does a few shows where he promotes them for like a fiver or ten pounds or one pound, whatever maybe that's like special promotion. But I think for the most part, most people you're going to see, even if you go see them in the real small venues, it's going to be between fifteen to thirty pounds. So you already made your money back instantly by seeing three bands in one day, and you can easily see more than that if you're um, if you wake up early and you have a plan and you mark people you want to see on the kind of set list and whatever maybe you can see as many people as possible. So sometimes I think, especially my friends with Primavera, they got a little bit you know it was a little bit annoying that they you know because the headliners weren't great, they everyone kind of dropped out. It's about the people that are on the lineup overall. But the problem with festivals in London isn't the lineups because usually the lineups are always stellar. Mostly most artists especially the indie ones, uh, are based here or are based in Europe. They want to come and play here. Some of the American guys want to come play because, you know, the London audience is like no other or the UK audience is like no other. You get people coming down from up north, coming to London festivals here. We were really, really um, able to travel and stuff. And with the abundance of low travel, uh, low travel fares from coaches to trains, with the um, Airbnb, there's no real um, obstacle in your way to kind of come to a festival and have a good time. But the issue that we have in London festivals, the same issue we have with London club nights, is that, most of the festivals are going to take part in parks where they're in really densely populated residential areas, right? And these densely populated residential areas have a real issue with sound, have a real issue with just general, you know, um, congregation of young people. They tend to not to like that sort of stuff. So it takes a long time for festivals to really garner a relationship with the local council, get to a point of agreement, make some compromises and be able to put a festival on. And I think any every festival I've been in London, whether it's Love Box, whether it's um, Field Day, whether it's Party in the Park, whatever it may be, has always had a consistent issue, and that's sound. No, organization and sound, right? You have to wait ages at the bar to get served because there's not enough bartenders, not enough bars, and you have to wait ages to get in, and you also, the sound is terrible if you're not right at the front. They can't put the volume up really loud. It's just a horrible experience. I think having been to Primavera and having stood, I don't know, a hundred meters, maybe 200 meters away, 400 meters away from the stage when Vampire Weekend was playing and it's still being loud as fuck. I really do appreciate, I really do appreciate how much better those festivals are because, you know, it's in Barcelona. They don't care about that fucking sound. The, the playa, the, whatever it is called, um, is, is right next to the beach. You no, know? again, no sound pollution there. The houses are really far away from the main site. Um, if you've been to, uh, if you've been to Primavera, you know, you have to walk up in a really long rampway through the gates and then through part and then past where all the merch stands are until you get to the main part of the actual festival. So again, there's no real, um, nuisance with the, with the neighbors. They end exactly. 11 p.m. people all head back where they're going it's kind of out of the way all the residential areas it's really set up in a way that they can blare the sound really loudly but other places can't so we are festival yesterday had an issue not with sound but with organization where people are having to wait outside for six hours or so in the in the baking sun because supposedly they only had six security guards at the front of the gate searching bags six and it took too long to get through and then people just got fed up and just started rushing the gates because of course you know I'm assuming this, the the stages were now filling up. People were starting to play, and you're missing people that you wanted to come and see. And it's it's a, just a quick, just a classic kind of like um, poor organization of festival. I don't think I've ever there's never been a year where one festival hasn't fucked up somewhere or the other. That festival last year in South London, where people were waiting for ages to get in. 
I think the one that had Solange and Eric Badu playing was horrible. Just a constant issue that keeps happening again and again and again. I think it maybe it's the fact that you know most of the people that are op- may operating these festivals are you know novices who have kind of come from the club night field and you know again taking a club night ethos and organizational capabilities and applying it to a festival with a thousand plus people is probably a lot more difficult. I don't know, wherever it is, it's a constant issue and this video kind of goes to show just how dangerous that kind of lack of organization can go. This is a tweet from a guy called um, Alexi Hicken and it says, hashtag we are festival. My friend filmed this. I was trapped inside the tent while all this was going on, clinging to a pole so I didn't get trampled on. After three hours of queuing and the blaring sun, it wasn't ideal, right? Which is an understatement, say the least. So these are hordes of people just running through the gates, right? Streaming through. Girls running past, guys, because again, they've just, they're taking too long to search people with tickets and stuff. People are hopping over fences. It's just annoying. And this is on the back of people just jumping over the thing anyway. So they're losing out of money because people are just, you know, jumping over gates and just getting in for free and not paying for it. Because I've seen a lot of people say that too. They got into a lot of festivals because, you know, they didn't have tickets, just jumped over the gates. And just a general lack of organization, just, it's just really, really, really um, disturbing. Gates are getting trampled down. I see, I saw a picture of, I saw some, I heard a story of a, a girl's leg got cut open and she was bleeding profusely and shit. Just crazy stuff to see, really. Um, again, just really disturbing for people that are there. I think in terms of, you know, parents and stuff, again, you, you know, you, you don't let your kid go out for ages and then they beg you to go to a festival and you, you hear this news, you're like, oh my God. For people that are on the fence about going, you know, no pun intended, you go and then you get subjected to this. Um, for those that were happy to queue, you know, you're you're underneath a, a stampede of people. It reminds me of that scene in um, Game of Thrones where Tyrion goes to fight that war and he's giving a massive speech and trying to cajole the, the the this army and they get all pumped up and they, they start running and charging and then someone smashes him with a hammer accidentally and he gets knocked out and he's knocked out for the entirety of the war and then he wakes up and the war's over and he's still alive. <laughs> it's really funny. It kind of reminds me of that scene. Um, but yeah, I guess not funny for the people there. And again, like I said, it's just, it's, I can, for as much as I can blame the, um, for as much as I can blame the organizers, I still think there is a part of me that's a little bit like, there's lack of maturity that comes with us as well with UK festival goers. We don't really know how to behave when it goes to come to these festivals. We're a bit amateurish, a little bit novice a little bit childish. We don't necessarily take care of each other. We're, we're quite self-absorbed. We only care about ourselves, right? So at least these kind of weird situations where no one's patient enough to just wait in the queue because again, we're all late, right? We're all here together. There's no rush. Um, it's it's adamant. It's, it's equivalent to the people on the planes that, you know, that rush to get their hand luggage off the plane. We're all going to get off roughly the same sort of time. You're not going to be that much in front of me, really, right? I'm probably going to see you at a taxi rank or at the bus stop. It's like, you know, just take your time um, and queue. But people don't intend to do that. They tend to look after their own self-interest. And again, it leads us to this example. And I think there's loads of evidence of this on the Twitter feed as well. People are complaining about um, the security being doing too much. There's videos here. I think of a security guard maybe dragging somebody out. Oh, the, the security got a bit fucked up. I think as well as a picture there. <laughs> video. Um, yeah, we are first again. More more news articles from the BBC News talking about it. actually. Let's see, let's see what the BBC News have to say. They're probably gonna give a few more details about the whole issue. Um, we are first of all people collapse after hours of queuing at the gates. Um, it says here the following some festival goers collapse after long queues um led to crowds pushing through security gates at london, london festival videos and photos on social media appear to show a rush through the gates some ticket holders told radio one newsbeat they left the site without getting into the event which is a really sad case right organizers have apologized for the, for the problems of course apologies are always accepted but you know they're not going to give refunds the two-day festival is held in east london and its saturday lineup included chase and status and bugs in malone and cam and camel fat um eyewitness say the lack of wristbands meant that people had to queue in front of temperature in, in hot temperatures in, in upminster which led to people charging past staff and onto the event which is true because i remember when i was djing the other day at, um at, Ta- at west at westfield um it was quite dead on the saturday and i was you know again you know probably um no it was quite dead on the saturday yeah for the most part i was wondering like, why was everybody not there and then i think i saw a few was it saturday or sunday i forgot what day it was but i was in tapis i saw loads of girls walking by with festival outfits i was like oh i wonder where they're going i was like oh yeah wait we are festival so they had quite a big group of people going there i think it's the festival that most of the general public tend to go to during this sort of time because it's got quite a good array a good lineup a good kind of 
assortment of artists from different sort of genres and stuff but yeah like i mentioned just not the most safest kind of uh, place to be when people are stampeding um and they say um this is another quote from somebody that was there they'd run out of wristbands at the door so they didn't have drink tokens wristbands when they were letting people through one 20 year old female said who didn't want to be named they weren't handing out water so everyone in the queue for, for three hours didn't have a drink again which is really nuts right this kind of reminds me of tanacon they took out the barriers and pushed through security the woman says she was standing near people vomiting in the fence off area and claims that staff nearby offered no help before the rush of the gates a barrier got thrown into the crowds the woman next to me got hit by it and it sliced a massive chunk out of her leg oh yeah 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 and if you've seen the barriers in real life you know how fucking heavy and sharp the bottoms of them are even the top where they kind of connect mama mia she passed out on the floor security ran over to her and people were just charging through they took out the barriers pushed through the security punching security just taking everyone out on their way again like i said lack of maturity from festival girls will make again don't get me wrong um we are first of all terrible organization i think for the most part there's a lot of people online that are saying that they're really poor um organizing of festivals they treat the djs really badly they treat the customers really badly they um commercial the organizer it seems like a little bit of a dickhead for the most part but there is a part of me that's also you know the punters that are going to these things have to be a lot more responsible and look after each other like we're all in this together we're all standing out here hot we're all we're all we're all hot we're all baking in the sun let's look after each other let's not be dickheads let's chill the fuck out but they don't do that they just kind of consistently you know i don't know just treat everyone with absolute this um disregard and it leads to a point where people are getting you know stretched out of a festival event before even never seen an artist um she left, the, she left the festival earlier so yeah this is another clip again of people what's this video show Mamma mia. That the bar? Oh, is that that's, that's to get in, right? <laughs> Look at that queue. <laughs> Honestly, what the fuck is going on? It's just like a sea of people. Oh my god. Again, I never saw this at Primavera. Primavera ticket entry was amazing. Sublime, right? You walk up the rampway. Security are standing there like in a huge line through the gates and there's massive bins there. They make sure you take out all your water bottles and stuff. They make sure you've got a wristband before you actually even enter through the thing, through the gate. So they take your water bottle, they take to take, to take your lid off or you can't bring in the alcohol in, whatever you're doing. Then if you've got a wristband, you go straight through. If you don't have a wristband, there's, to the left-hand side, there's ticket. Um, there's like a, a ticket kiosk area that's kind of labelled. I think from the numbers or the, your surname, I've got it away, so, so it's kind of split up into chunks, so maybe one to a, one to a hundred, hundred and one to two hundred, like that, like six or seven stations. And the girls and guys on there are super quick with kind of checking your details, making sure you've got everything, giving you a wristband, giving you a card that you have to make sure you keep on you. And then you kind of make your exit through there and you head in straight into the uh, gates. And then from there, they um, scan your card. Uh, scan your wristband or check your wristband and you go straight through really quick process i don't think i waited more than 10 minutes to get in ever in pre and this was during the peak times when everyone's going to see a particular band or you're going to see a particular you're going to a particular time especially on, on the first day never waited around always 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 going there as quick as always going for as quick as possible but the only times i've had this sort of like you know meat market there's always been london festivals whether it's love box whether it's this I mean, whether it's field day, it's all the same thing. It's always the same thing. And again, it's annoying because the festivals have good lineups, man. They're usually in places that, are, and again, it's like, it's, you know, Barcelona is, is not the most expensive place to go to in Europe, but you're still having to pay a hundred or so pounds plus for an air, for a flight, 200 quid for an Airbnb if you're staying on your own, or maybe, maybe less than 200 if you're with a group, um, spending money, um, money for food. You're having to, there's a lot of expenditure there. So if you can afford to go to a festival in East London and take the, you know, the circle line or whatever it may be called and get there right you would like to go wouldn't you right even with the sound issues but the what you don't want is this sort of thing i'd take a level i'll take a decrease in sound and maybe the ability to see my favorite band in around the area that i live in but i wouldn't take this as a minute i wouldn't take two things i wouldn't take the sound issues and this general lack of organization and still go it's not worth the hassle which is why I'm hoping to go Junction 2 isn't that shit but I don't think so because the reviews so far I've seen online have been quite good uh, the the videos I've seen of the of the stages have been quite good too and quite encouraging I think the fact that they've got diff, little different stages set up everywhere it kind of stops the ability not to have good sound issues uh, the fact that it's in the middle of Boston Manor Park underneath a motorway maybe helps with the sound issues they can kind of ramp it up a little bit I'm hoping these are all true um the lady says she, when she left, she saw ambulances and police vans arriving on the site. In a statement to Newsbeat, Metropolitan officers said officers are at the location working alongside organizers and ambulance. We're not aware of any serious injury apart from obviously. Look, look at the VIP queue. 
Look at that, Mamma Mia. <laughs> Um, festival goer uh, Ronaldo Henry traveled from Birmingham for the festival that's a bit where it gets annoying I guess if you're a, a kid that kind of turned up from um, outside of London to go these kind of things annoying I think when you're in London and you've been to enough you know park park themed park festival stuff even stuff in London fields is shit Victoria Park is fucking garbage right events you've been to enough of those little community events where you know the standard isn't going to be that high but again you'll take all the errors to kind of sit somewhere local, hang out with your friends, not have to travel too much, not spend too much money. You know what I mean? There's little compromises that you make. But when you travel from down from Birmingham, um, he's, um, the Birmingham kid says, we were in the queue, four people had collapsed around us. People were throwing up and shouting for medics. All the staff were doing was throwing water bottles into the <laughs> Like that video of Trump. Um, where was he? In that, uh, where was he? In the state somewhere in America where they had like a, a tornado or a hurricane or something. And you're given aid or relief, and you're throwing fucking kitchen towels at <laughs> like a basketball into the crowd. They should throw water bottles at you, man. If a water bottle, a, a full water bottle that hits you without you knowing is gonna hit you, that's gonna hurt, you know. That might take out an eye. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> oh, people are crawling on the floor and crying. Oh, the lack of honesty. So many people that I don't know how. D- Honestly, sometimes in life, yeah, you get, oh, man, it's so hard to put stuff on. It's hard to organize things. Life is, you know, I can't do this. It takes talent. No, no, no. Sometimes look at these big events. You're like, you know what? You could do better if you decide to make an event. Spending a, 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 at least a year, 18 months, putting an event on, hiring people, booking your favorite artists, specking places out, going through all the details that need to be done. And you could probably put on a better event for a group of 500 people. You could probably do it, which is why it explains, which is what explains a lot of these club nights and bars like Jazz Cafe and stuff are putting on their own the festivals because there are some real amateur hours out there putting on events, man. Everything gets outsourced. There's no personal accountability. They're just doing it, again, to add another uh, chink to their CV or to appeal a call or something. There's no real love for the music, no real love for the people that are attending your event. It's just a cash grab. You want to get as many sponsors as you can on board to make money and then to kind of flip it and sell it to an AIG later on down the line or something. It's really devoid of any soul, any personality, right? Even sometimes the statements they put out on their Twitter and Facebook, it's like, just, you know, regurgitate bullshit. Um, it was, and then anyway, it says the following, um, he was also involved in the crash at the entrance. Um, everyone at the back of us was just pushing towards us. Um, the Birmingham kid says, I turned around to see my friends getting crushed by other people. People were just coming out there crawling, crying because they'd been trampled on. It was ridiculous and what security was doing was just trying to push people back. But he says his two friends will return to We Are Festival on Sunday to try and get in again for a festival second day. The festival has put up a statement offering sincere apologies. Again, sincere apologies are like thoughts and prayers, isn't it, for people that are at the end of fucking um, school shootings. It's literally the most emptiest statement you could ever say, right? Because you know it's not going to be any better on the Sunday. It's just, they're just going to be less people there because they decided not to turn up. The demands and the staff are going to be less, but it's going to be the same thing. See, they tried to get away with putting on a festival with six or so security guards at the gate. Because, again, it's not their fault. It's the operational issues that's allowing them to fail at their position, right? No enough people. Not enough ports of entry. Um, the Q manager system not being set up properly. Um, refreshments. Um, not enough medics. Uh, water staff. Whatever. Maybe all these things are what lead to these kind of debacles happening. But again, personal accountability does it exist. Probably no. 